in combat. And many of these people cry out to God, and he answers them not a word. And they have the challenge of trying to learn to deal with the silence of God. In our scripture lesson, we encounter a woman who had to deal with the silence of God. Matthew 15, beginning with verse 21, leaving that place, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. A Canaanite woman from that vicinity came to him, crying out, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is suffering terribly from demon possession. And he answered her, not a word. I love it when God says yes to me. It makes me feel like I'm special. I don't even mind when he says no, because I trust his omniscience. He is all wise. When I was growing up, it's about nine years of age, I overheard my mother talking about one of the deacons in the church. She said, he makes big money. I kept my antenna up so that I could hear what the figure was, and eventually she said it, he makes $100 dollars a week. I went to my bedroom. It was time to go to sleep, and I did not pray my usual, now I lay me down to sleep. I prayed a sincere prayer. Lord, Master of the universe, if you will grant this request, I will never ask you for anything else for as long as I live. <laughs> if you will let me one day grow up and make $100 a week, you will never hear another petition from my lips. Aren't you glad? God does not always say yes to our prayers. <laughs> Had he done so, I would not be able to fill up my gas tank today. He had capped me out at $100 a week. In the 11th grade, I was at a boarding academy in Pottstown, Pennsylvania. I walked across the campus and I saw a young woman. I was in I had an English literature class and for some reason when I saw her, the words of Christopher Marlowe's Faustus leaped to mind. Is this the face that launched a thousand ships? Ah, Helen, by thy beauty I'm enthralled. Thou art fairer than the evening air, clad in the beauty of a thousand stars. I went back to my room and fell on my knees. And since I had not yet been granted the previous petition, I prayed... <laughs> Lord God of the universe, if you will grant this request, I will never ask you for anything else for as long as I live. I saw a damsel today. See, my mother had us memorizing the King James Version, so I saw a damsel today. I felt something beatific in my heart, and if somehow you can let her feel what I feel so that together... We will traverse the seasons. I will never ask you for anything else for as long as I live. Well, God said no. And about ten years ago, I was preaching at a church, and I saw that woman, and I said, Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Tears of joy were streaming down my face. The people said he's under the influence of the Holy Spirit. They did not know. I thank you. thank you. 
So we don't mind yes and we don't mind no. It is when he says nothing that we go through what F. Scott Fitzgerald called the dark night of the soul. Now, let's face it, sometimes he says nothing because of our sins. Isaiah 59, 1 and 2 says, The Lord's arm is not short that he cannot reach you. His ears are not heavy that he cannot hear. Your iniquities have come between you and God. Like Saul in 1 Samuel 28, seeking answers because of the silence of God from a witch of Endor. God is silent because of our transgression. Sometimes he is silent because we're not ready to hear what he has to say. John 16, verse 12, says Jesus speaking to his disciples in his farewell discourse. He said, there are many things I want to tell you, but you're not ready to hear them yet. Sometimes God is silent because we do not have the proper motives. James chapter 4 verse 3 says you ask and you don't receive because you ask amiss that you might spend it on your own pleasures. Sometimes God is silent because of our lack of faith. We're like the disciples in Matthew chapter 17 trying unsuccessfully to cast out a demon, to exorcise a demon from this boy. And they couldn't. Later, they came to Jesus and said, Why was God silent? What happened? And Jesus, our blessed Lord, said, It was because of your lack of faith. It was because of your unbelief. I'm so glad that this Canaanite woman had a prepossessing faith. It is indeed a great faith. Our blessed Lord says, Woman, you have great faith. Your request is granted. And her daughter was healed from that very hour. This woman teaches us how to deal with the silence of God. How do you do it? First, let love be your motivation. Many times God is silent because of the selfish nature of our prayers. This woman comes to Jesus not to get something for herself, but to get something for her daughter. Love was the motivation. My father was an alcoholic. He was not around very often. My then four siblings and I were taught to pray for my father. And every day, my mother, who was the greatest Christian I have ever known, would put words into our little mouth. She would say, now you repeat after me, and we would repeat like a voice choir. Dear Jesus, dear Jesus, please help daddy, please help daddy. To stop drinking, to stop drinking. I prayed that prayer through elementary school. And God said nothing. I prayed it through junior high school. And God answered me not a word. When I reached the 11th grade, I stopped praying that prayer. I said, I'll let my mother pray it. I'm still going to pray, but I'm not going to pray for something that God has obviously decided not to do anything about. I was studying theology in college, but I would not pray for my father. I prayed for the pygmies in Africa. I prayed for the lepers in Calcutta. I prayed for everyone, but I would not pray for my father. I couldn't deal with the silence of God. Well, God has a sense of humor. I came home from college and they said, oh, you, you're studying theology. Why don't you preach? Church, Baltimore, Berea Temple. About 1,500 people, I was preaching. 
terrified by the experience with preaching. And finally, at the end of the sermon, I made an invitation to discipleship for those who had never asked Jesus to be Lord of their lives, to do that. And to my amazement, dressed very informally in coveralls, who should come down the aisle but my alcoholic father? It was one of the few times I have experienced ambivalence at seeing someone come to Christ. What in the world is going on here, and why doesn't he have a tie? (laughs) My father, under the power of God's anointing, put down the bottle without any kind of alcohol rehab or all of the sophisticated stuff we do today, and never picked it up again because God ended his silence and used the very individual who had become too obstinate and arrogant to intercede for his father as as a vehicle to draw his father to Jesus Christ. Let love Be your motivation. My mother never stopped praying. And God honored her prayer. If you're going to deal with the silence of God, let love be your motivation. But also, my friends, if you're going to deal with his silence, know that he is listening even when he doesn't speak. David said in the 139th Psalm, How can I flee from your spirit? If I ascend into heaven, you're there. If I make my bed in hell, you're there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there, your right hand will uphold me. God is listening even when he doesn't speak. You remember the story of Mary and Martha. Lazarus is sick in John chapter 11. Jesus is not in Bethany where they live. And so they send word to Jesus by a messenger. The one whom you love is sick. They know that Jesus will know what to do. In verse 4 of John 11, Jesus says to the messengers, This sickness is not unto death but for the glory of God. And the messengers scurry away with the great news to Mary and Martha. Don't worry about a thing. The Lord of life said he will live. As Lazarus' condition deteriorates, no doubt they are encouraging him. The master said, you're going to be all right. This sickness is not unto death. And they probably greeted the news of Lazarus' death with incredulity. It can't be. The master said he's not going to die. And where is Jesus now? He's silent. He answers them not a word. Surely he will be at the funeral. He's not there. He says absolutely nothing. But you and I know that he knew what was going on all along. He is listening even when he doesn't speak. He shows up after Lazarus has been dead four days. You can imagine (laughs) Mary and Martha probably have a little bit of an attitude. Mary, who sat at his feet, she doesn't even go out to greet him. Martha does. And and let me tell you, we are too hard on Martha. You know how we tell the story of Mary and Martha in Luke chapter 10? Martha is in the kitchen cooking the collard greens, the fried fried chicken, and that's what it says in the Greek, in fried chicken and the (laughs) Greek. Got to know biblical languages, ladies and gentlemen. She's cooking the collard greens and the cornbread and the fried chicken. And Mary would sit at his feet. 
and we celebrate Mary. But Martha comes out with amazing.